Hi there. We're here to talk about what happens when you connect up capacitors into DC circuits. And we're going to cover quite a bit of information in the next couple minutes. So I have a little here, a little circuit, a DC source, and then a switch. I have my capacitor, and what I have there is a discharge resistor. So we know capacitors actually have the ability to store a charge, so we need to have somewhere to put that charge when we de-energize our capacitor, right? So we're not just walking around with a charged up capacitor because it can discharge at any time. So we put in a discharge resistor and we'll talk about how that works. We're gonna talk about charging the capacitor when I energize the circuit, and then we're gonna talk about what happens when I de-energize the circuit and discharge the capacitor. So capacitors, they have the ability to store a charge in the electrostatic field. And when they do that, they oppose a change in voltage, right? Capacitors oppose that change in voltage. So what we see is right when we energize a capacitor, we're opposing a change in voltage. Our voltage is gonna start at zero and eventually build up to what? To match the source voltage, so there's no change. Measure 24 volts here, you would measure 24 volts here, right? Well, while that's happening, while it's storing a charge, it's gonna take a lot of current to store the charge. But once the voltage is the same at the capacitor and at the source, there's no potential difference between the two points. So what we actually see our current do is something like that. So our current is actually gonna be falling from a bigger number down to a smaller number. Now we had time relationships with inductors and we're gonna have time relationships with capacitors as well. We're gonna see five equal time constants from the beginning until we are at our steady state or until we've reached our full value. So we're gonna see those time relationships and it's based on the resistance in the circuit and it's based on the capacitance of the circuit. So what we see now is we're actually gonna see T equals R times C. So the time of a single time constant in seconds is equal to the resistance times the capacitance in farads. Now with that, we can see that you know if I have more resistance, it's gonna take longer because I'm gonna take longer to overcome. Same with if I have more capacitance. If I have a higher ability to store charge, it's gonna take longer to get there and vice versa. Uh, what we also see is as we go up along our scale, voltage, we're opposing that change in voltage. After the first time constant, our voltage will have rised that 63.2% of the initial value. Then we go up and our numbers are the same. We're going to see 86.5%, 95%, 98 0.1% and 99.4%, right? And these are rising. So each time constant, it's rising up 63.2% of whatever's left. Well, we can take a look at that and we can say, okay, no problem. We can use a Euler's time constant formula if we want for that. We can go, okay, a voltage of a time constant equals the steady state voltage one minus E to the negative time constant. If we want to use that formula, if you want to use the numbers as well, that's a great way to remember it. Just remembering it's 63.2% each time constant. In this case, it's rising 63.2%. Well, our current is falling, and it's actually gonna fall 63.2% from the total value. So it's actually gonna be the total minus 63.2%. And we'll see the exact same numbers, 86.5% falling from maximum, 95% falling from maximum, 98.1%, and then 99.4%. So it's important to understand that it's actually falling or decreasing by that value. Which, and if we're using the formula and we want to, we can go I of the time constant, equals that steady state current or our peak current, E to the negative time constant. So there's no one minus anymore. Okay, so we energize our circuit, it takes a little bit, our voltage reaches its steady state, our current gets down to zero, there's no potential difference, no current flowing, and then we say okay, and we 
flip the switch and we now are going to discharge our capacitor. So let's talk about what happened. Now we can say in the first little bit, current was flowing this direction through our circuit. Now it's so all of our electrons are storing up here and all our, right? Uh, what happens when we flip the switch, now our current is actually going to flow the opposite direction through that circuit. Right, so just understand that, we're still in a DC circuit. Our voltage was a peak, but it's actually going to discharge because I'm opposing that change. Now I have a zero volt source and I've got a stored charge, I'm opposing that change, so I'm going to discharge my voltage. At the same time, when I have a big potential difference, right, I have a huge potential difference between the source and the capacitor, no source anymore, my current is flowing the opposite direction, but is also going to be a falling value. So they're both going from big numbers down to zero, or to very small numbers. Again, what we're going to see is the same time relationship, right, we'll see five equally timed time constants, right? The time is going to be affected by the resistance of the circuit and the capacitance of the circuit, and it should match up with our charging time. So if it takes five seconds to charge, it'll be five to discharge. Now what we get is we talk about these values, right? If my voltage is going down, I have reduced by 63.2%. I've gone down by 63.2% in the first time constant. Then at the second time constant, I've gone down by 86.5%. Then at the third, I've gone down 95%. Then at the fourth, I've gone down 98.1%. And by the time I, at my fifth time constant, I've gone down 99.4%. All right, so it's more important to understand the graph than it is to remember the actual numbers, but just understanding that my voltage is going from a peak down to zero. Same thing with the current in the opposite direction, right? It's flowing the opposite way in a DC circuit from a peak down to zero. And we can use those formulas again if we want to, right? Our current's going 63 minus 63.2, that like that. And our formulas here would be the voltage of the time constant equals the peak voltage e to the negative time constant. And we would see the exact same formula for our current. We would go I of the TC equals that peak current, just e to the negative time constant. So whether you're remembering 63.2% and doing the long math, whether you're trying to remember all of your percentages, or whether you just want to use Euler's formula, just remember what is it doing, right? Is it decreasing in value or is it rising in value? Uh, thanks for helping, or thanks for watching. I hope that helped. See you again soon.